Okay, we're ready for our second presentation of the afternoon, and that will be by uh, Linda Wang. And the topic is conversion of plastic waste into pristine polymers, naphtha, fuels, and other products of sustainability. Linda, Thank you. The floor is yours. We depend on plastic products in our daily lives. The problem is that only a small percentage is really recycled and reused. This exponential growth and accumulation is very bad for the environment, especially the waste in the oceans. We'll have more plastic waste than fish by 2050. So once the waste gets into oceans, it's irreversible because the cost of cleaning the ocean is enormous. Our team is developing advanced technologies for converting plastic waste into useful products. For example, we can convert grocery bags and packing materials in supercritical water into clean fuels or wax. We can also convert polystyrene cups or food containers into pristine polystyrene which can be made into new products. By converting the plastic waste into valuable products, we can create a driving force to motivate the public and industry to reduce the amount of waste and the associated risk to the environment. Our team consists of four investigators to date and five industrial advisors. I have 40 years of experience in conversion separation of chemicals, and Dr. Kilas has 30, uh, 20 years experience on catalysis, and she's an expert on fuel, transportation fuels. Dr. Sutherland is a sustainable uh, manufacturing expert. She, he has 30 years experience, and Dr. Tyner is a distinguished economist, and he is specializing in supply chain and product optimization. We have five ad industrial advisory uh, uh, board uh, right now. Dr. Warnock is uh, the chief technology intelligence officer in Braskin, who is a major producer of polypropylene. Uh, Dr. Wang is the packaging innovation director for Colgate Palm Olive. And uh, Dr. Annette Lowe is the vice president of supply chain for PO Technologies. Uh, Martin Bauman is the Vice President of Sales for Irima Plastic Recycling Systems. And Mr. J. Chu is the President of East Terra Plastics, a uh, major uh, plastic recycler in uh, Indiana. So the idea is to change uh, the current the linear use of the petroleum. In other words, the crude oil is made into polyolefin, polystyrene products, with a single use right now is in uh, largely landfilled, a small part incinerated, and we try to change the linear uh, path into a circular path. So we'll collect the uh, waste uh, in the sorted or mixed way, and we can convert using extraction, absorption into pristine polymers, or we can use the uh, supercritical water to convert plastic waste into clean wax or clean fuels or solvents and monomers, and this can be reused in the manufacturing uh, of new products, or this can also replace part of the transportation fuels and other products. In this way, we can save the crude oil consumption, uh, making into these plastic products and fuels, and we have more efficient use of our resources. So we want to um, convert our current batch process into a continuous process in the state-of-the-art mini pilot plant and we'll show how the waste plastics can be prepared and fit into this hydrothermal conversion reactor, adding water in supercritical water. This waste will be converted into oil, and this oil can be separated, purified into gasoline, diesel, <coughs> wax, and many other products. And the small amount of gas generated can be used for energy, and the water used can be recycled and reused. We will take an uh, overall uh, optimization approach. We will optimize the supply sources. We we'll develop a complete raw material supply chain. We we'll optimize the product portfolio to ensure market viability and profitability. We will have a complete life cycle technical economic analysis of the entire supply chain. So we start with the raw materials, extraction of raw materials, decide on the product design and polymer selection, 
into the new manufacturing process use, end of use, do not go to the landfills, collect it, either convert it into pristine polymers and remade into products reuse, or use the hydrothermal uh, process to convert into fuels for energy, or convert into raw materials and re reuse in the manufacturing process. In this overall, we'll do the overall analysis to make sure the process is cost effective and have minimal environmental impact. So technology alone is not enough to solve this critical problem. Uh, we will need experts to recruit experts to form a consortium, the experts from environment, policy, communications, education, nonprofits to educate the public to change the single use and throw away uh, lifestyle. And we need a business to help to collect the end of life plastic. And we the industry to make the products recyclable and make, may use the, implement the new technologies to convert the end of life plastic waste into useful products. In moving forward, uh, we you use the consortium as a basis for future funding. Uh, we are going to write proposals to the National Science Foundation. They just came up with the Emerging Frontiers in Research Innovation Initiative. One of those, the eliminate, eliminating the end of plastic waste uh, is a, a major thrust area. We'll work with nonprofits and foundations and companies and venture capitalists to raise funding to improve this technology even further. Why Purdue? Purdue has an interdisciplinary team with outstanding track record. Among the three of us, we have over 130 years of research, not including the advisory board members. We have outstanding graduate students and facilities. We have extensive alumni network. And our plastic conversion technology was featured recently in more than 100 major news outlets. So as you may know, all the major plastic producers aim to triple their production by 2030. At the meantime, our oceans are becoming a plastic soup. Our beaches, the sand, contains about 15% microplastics. One third of the fish in the ocean has microplastic in their guts. So what does the future hold? I think major, major changes uh, are required to make our future sustainable. I hope Purdue will lead this effort in this critical endeavor. Thank you. <laughs> I'd be happy to answer any questions. Yes, Dr. Jiski. Have you or Wally Tyner tried to look at the economics of this from the perspective of making it a for-profit business? Yes, definitely, it's, potentially it's profitable. Because in, for example, in converting the, the plastic waste into pristine polymers, we can have about $500 of profit per ton of plastic waste recycled. In the fuel, it's a little bit tricky because we have to compete with petroleum crude and producing fuels. So that profit is margins less, it's about $300 a ton. And uh, the wax is, is, is very profitable. The problem is the market is very small. Whereas we, if we convert all the plastic waste into fuels, we can consume it because that only represents 4% of our current need for transportation fuels. Does mm -hmm. your uh, analysis take account of the cost of gathering yes. raw materials? Yes, it's between, depending on the uh, locations, and, and it depend, about $70 to $100 a ton just to, gather uh, the waste into one place. Yes, but that's into, uh, taken into account of the cost analysis. So potentially it's very profitable, especially for sorted plastic waste, because we can convert them into top quality, low sulfur, you know, ultra low sulfur diesel fuels. Uh, the problem is when you mix it together, then the oil quality is lower and, and the yield is lower. Thank so the, in the future, if we can collect more sorted plastic waste, we can make a lot of profit. In, along yes. these same lines, I yes. mean, are there high value chemicals that can be produced? Yes, definitely. Produced yes, the brass can was very excited that we, c uh, we can com convert plastic waste into olefins because you know, they can use olefins to produce many, many different chemicals. So this is a very diversified 
product portfolio. So the, the, uh, the challenge is actually, there are too many options. So we need Wally Tyner to tell us which one, <laughs> which one to optimize. Along those lines also, if I may, yes. you know, so you have a, a team, I'm, I'm yes. like that Wally, you yes. have an economist yes. uh, um, that can look at these things. Yes. Are there uh, other aspects, you have engineers and chemists and economists, but are yes. there other aspects of this from a social sciences perspective? Yes, definitely. Think about also? Yeah, the, unfortunately, Laurie Walden just left. You know, she was very interested and supportive of this project, and we'll, we'll try to, to recruit another expert on public policy. And we have excellent center of environment, and a lot of people in that center showed a strong interest after they knew about this proposal. So that's why I put them the top effort in trying to recruit them to expand this consortium. We have also excellent communication education experts on campus. I just haven't had time to recruit them formally into this group. Thanks. Yes, thank you. Quick question, uh, follow yes. up on the first question. Yes. What's the, what's the energy conversion yes. ratio? What's the ETA? Yes, good question. The pristine polymer is the most energy efficient because we dissolve them in mixture solvents and then we purify it, that's it, restore them into pristine polymers. So that energy cost is only about one twentieth, uh, one, one fifth of the, the energy to remake the polymers from crude oil. And in the converting the plastic waste into uh, fuels and that is, has a little bit more, about twice the energy consumption uh, than the pristine polymers. But still that is energy saving, it's an energy po over energy positive process. So we have done uh, the, in, published this in the first paper. Maybe I'm pushing a little bit too much, but uh -huh. for each watt of energy invested in your process, yes. how many watts of energy do you get at the end? Yes, so uh, in the pristine polymers we have uh, done extensive analysis which we only need 15% uh, of that watt uh, in making the polymers, remaking the polymers from crude oil. For the uh, plastic fuels, that was about twice, about 30% of the energy uh, used. In, but still, overall, we have a net energy positive because if you make it from the crude, crude oil again, uh, that will, make, uh, will consume more energy to make the, the same amount of fuel. It, yes. So is this a, a local type of solution? I mean, just uh, typically the issue with these types of solutions are the logistics and the costs involved. Yes. So, I mean, I can't imagine you can collect all the waste in the United States and bring it to one place. So oh, no, no, this will be distributed. This, that's why we need the, the economists to tell us, you know, the, how do we locate this, uh, uh, these plants. Uh, we think this will be near the waste management facilities. So because the waste is already being accumulating there so in the landfill. Within landfills. a town or with within, at the town in level? The, in the, well, each town has a waste management. Uh, and big cities have a huge facilities so of waste management. And the nearby, that will be the best location for this, uh, this plant so, or conversion. Okay. Yes. Yes. Uh, do, you already have, um, do you already have some uh, local... Uh, partners for the waste management? Companies. Yes, yes. We're talking to a major waste management company in, uh, in Houston. They are very interested in, uh, in this technology. And there's a local, um, it's called uh, Quincy Recycle in Indiana. They have seven plants in Indiana and, and Illinois nearby. They're also very interested uh, in this technology. And I think they're, <laughs> I have I have got inquiries from all over the globe, from Russia, from Vietnam, from Brunei. I didn't even know where Brunei was until a few weeks ago. Uh, Vietnam, uh, Myanmar, uh, you know, everywhere. Uh, so uh, they, they all wanted this technology tomorrow. So I said, we're not quite ready. <laughs> Give me some time. <laughs> but we'll work as fast as we can, okay, to uh, provide this process to scale up. Yes. No other questions? Okay. Yes. Oh. Yes. <laughs> so, so what, what, does this, what would this uh, give you that would lead you to the next step? How yes. Uh, 
I think converting from a lab scale batch process into a continuous process, that's a major step towards a commercial production because continuous process is at least five times more efficient than batch. So that's economically, this is a necessary step. So we think this is the major barrier right now is to convert from batch to continuous. Once we demonstrate in the state of the art in the mini pilot plant, I think the scale up into a, a regular pilot plant, about a ton a day, that's much easier. Once that one ton per day pilot is built and demonstrated, commercialization is, is, is natural, it's is very easy. Yes, thank you. Linda, thank you so much. Yes, thank you so yeah. much, thank you. Yeah. <laughs>